How do you select the best things to do in the Nelson region? This is a common challenge for many travelers as there's so much on offer. From hiking the Abel Tasman National Park, local arts and crafts, to a very authentic food and wine scene. Don't worry, after watching this video, you'll be able to make the right choices. My name is Michael, let's get started. To make it as easy as possible for you, I've structured this video into four sections. Number one, locations, townships, and distances. Number two, key things to do in Nelson. Number three, key things to do in Mapua, Upper Mutri region. And number four, the Avril Tasman National Park. I will add some of the website links into the description box below so you can follow up on my suggestions. Also note, we'll cover the Golden Bay area with another video as it's simply too much in one production. Nice. Number one, Nelson Tasman locations. So if you look at the Google map, you will see that Nelson is located on the northern part of the South Island. About 50,000 people living here. The Tasman district is located next to Nelson, much larger and has another 50,000. This includes the Golden Bay area. Most visitors travel by car or ferry into Nelson. In my job as a travel designer, my guests often fly into Nelson as it has excellent flight connection. This is my first key travel tip for you. A domestic flight from the North Island to Nelson will save you a lot of travel time and money. So consider this with your overall travel planning. By the way, you can download my free New Zealand travel planning sheet in the subscription box below. This will help you greatly with setting up your New Zealand holiday itinerary. Right next to Nelson, around about 35 kilometers away, you come to the village of Mapua in the Upper Mutri region. Both of these areas are rich in history and include some of the more hidden spots. We'll talk about those lovely places soon. Right across the Tasman Bay from Nelson is the Abel Tasman National Park. At 225 square kilometers, it's the smallest national park in New Zealand. Some would call it the most beautiful with its golden beaches, inland waterfalls and gorgeous and endless choice of activities. It is really lovely. Further to the west is the Golden Bay region, which is also part of the Tasman district. If you find this video helpful, it would be great if you could hit the subscribe button below to stay in touch for more helpful New Zealand travel videos to come. Plus, put any comments or questions into the comments box below. Number two, Nelson things to do. The Nelson Saturday market has a wonderful local vibe. It goes from 8 o'clock in the morning till 1 p.m. every Saturday throughout the year. At the Nelson Market, you'll see a diverse array of local crafts, fresh products, delicious food, and unique handmade goods. Plus, you'll be able to kick back and enjoy live music in a great community spirit. The Suda Gallery and Queen's Park. You can explore the rich artistic heritage of Nelson at the Suda Gallery, which has an impressive collection of contemporary and traditional New Zealand art. This historic gallery also features a cafe and a beautiful botanical gardens, the Queen's Garden, next to it. The Queen's Garden provides a tranquility of a peaceful retreat. It's a great place to refresh and enjoy a colorful array of flower beads and scenic walk paths. I think it's the perfect place for nature lovers and families. The Lord of the Rings shop. No trip to Nelson is complete without a visit at the Jens Hansen Lord of the Ring shop. This is where the iconic One Ring was created for the film trilogy. You find a range of exquisite handcrafted pieces, including replicas of the famous ring and other unique designs. The center of the world walk is a very popular walking trail not far away from the city center. Once you reach the top, you'll be rewarded with stunning panoramic views of Nelson and its surrounding. It's an easy to moderate trail that takes you to the geographical heart of New Zealand. Founders Heritage Park. If you want to step back in time, go on a visit to the Founders Heritage Park. It is a charming living museum. It showcases Nelson's history with its vintage buildings, heritage displays and quaint village atmosphere. Perfect for families. There's also a playground for kids, cafe and a historic railway. Cable Bay Adventure Park. 
If you're looking for a fun physical activity, visit the Cable Bay Adventure Park, which is located about 15 minutes north of the city. It offers a range of activities from zip lining, quad biking, paintball and horse trekking. If you're a bit of a thrill seeker and nature lover, this will be the place for you. Nelson Classic Car Museum. If you are after a bit of nostalgia and glamour of beautiful vintage cars, then make sure you visit the Nelson Car Museum. They have an extensive collection of old timers and classic cars plus an excellent coffee with lovely food and great coffee. Yes! Pix Peanut Butter Shop and Tour. This is a fascinating story behind New Zealand's favorite peanut butter and you can learn about by visiting Pix Peanut Butter Shop and join the guided tour. You'll be able to listen on how this place was developed from nothing to a major New Zealand icon. Plus, enjoy the tasting and see for yourself how this delicious spread is made from the peanut to the jar. Nelson Mountain Biking Trails If you're keen cyclists, make sure you try one of the exhilarating mountain bike trails around Nelson. There's a trail to suit all skill levels, plus you can experience the natural beauty of the Mai Tai Valley along with a bike ride. While we're speaking about scenic rides, the Great Taste Trail is a wonderful cycle route that takes you throughout the picturesque landscape with vineyards and coastal areas. It is a leisure trail and it's ideal for anyone want to give the cycling a go plus suitable for families you get to see the best of the region's landscape and local products there's also a really good day trip available you can start from Nelson cycle to Mapua it's about 35 kilometers and then get a transfer back to Nelson another cycling day trip from Nelson I would highly recommend is the Spooner Tunnel this historic Spooner Tunnel is New Zealand's longest decommissioned railway tunnel and it's a wonderful day trip. It is very popular for more experienced cyclists seeking a more adventurous experience through a piece of the region's railway heritage. So before we move to the Upper Mutri Mapua region, Tahunanui Beach is the very popular place for locals and visitors alike. It is perfect for swimming, sunbathing and family fun. The Crampians Walk if a challenge is what you are after, then consider going on the Crampians Walk. Once you get to the top, the hike provides rewarding panoramic views over Nelson and the surrounding Tasman Bay. This trail goes through native bush and you get a great workout. If you find this video helpful, it would be great if you could hit the subscribe button below for more helpful New Zealand videos to come. Also, you can download my free New Zealand planning sheet in the description box below. This will help you greatly with setting up your New Zealand holiday. Now let's move further to the west, the Mapua and Upper Muturi area. First is the Rabbit Island. It's one of my favorites. This large coastal reserve has an expensive sandy beach and pine forest. It's a great place to have a picnic and generally relax. And being a short drive from Nelson, it's ideal for cyclists and swimming. It's also part of the Great Taste Trail, the cycle trail. The Nelson Tasman region is also renowned for its boutique wines. So why not sample the region's finest wines with a local wine tour? These tours covers the renowned wineries such as Seyfried's, Gravity, Hefe, Flexmoor, to name a few. Who knows, you may even get to meet the winemaker in person. At the Mapua Wharf, you come across a bustling hub of boutique shops, art galleries, cafes and restaurants. There's a charming village atmosphere that especially comes alive on the weekends. Mapua is a perfect for leisurely stroll, informal dining and taking in the stunning waterfront views. Kina Peninsula and Beach. Now, this is a bit of a hidden spot. I do recommend that you visit that tranquil Kina Beach and the nearby Tasman village. What you find is a very peaceful retreat with beautiful coastal sceneries, vineyards and local artisans. And while you're there, why not do a bit of a beach combing, wine tasting, exploring the rural charm of the area. If you're interested in weaving and woodworks, I do highly recommend to pop into the joint works shop in the Tasman village. Upper Mutri village and pub. The Mutri pub is one of New Zealand's oldest pubs. A step 
established 1850, this historic establishment offers a cozy atmosphere, hearty meals and a selection of local beers and wines, making it a favorite spot for both the locals and visitors. Newdorf Road and Michael Macmillan Gallery. If you love the charm of a gorgeous country road, then you really must travel up the scenic Newdorf Road in Upper Mutri. This area is lined up with vineyards, orchards and charming rural countryside. A visit to the Michael Macmillan Gallery on Newdorf Road is a must-do. The stunning artwork and sculptures that Michael has created are sold around the globe. The gallery also showcases a blend of contemporary and traditional pieces in a serene local setting. Hops and fruit orchards around the Motueka area. Not many visitors know about the vast amount of hops and fruit orchards surrounding the Motueka to Eka village. This region is known for its rich agricultural heritage. There are even places you can pick your own fruit. Also make sure you taste the local apple cider. It's delicious. Right, number four, last but not least, the Apple Tasman National Park. But before you travel there, you want to stop at the Rewaka Resurgence. This is where crystal clear water emerges from a limestone cave. It is a place you will only hear the sound of nature, a very tranquil place for you to take a short walk into a beautiful natural setting. So there are two main access points for the Abel Tasman National Park. One is Kaiteri Terry Beach and the other one is Marahau Beach. Now let's talk about excursions from Kaiteri Terry Beach. The first one is with Abel Tasman Sea Shuttles Water Taxi. Explore the stunning coastline of the Abel Tasman National Park with the Abel Tasman Sea Shuttle Water Taxi. This is a very convenient service which departs from Kaiteri Terry Beach. By using the water taxi, you get access to remote beaches and walking tracks in the park. The Kaiteri Terry Mountain Bike Park is right next to Kaiteri Terry Beach. Enjoy an exhilarating ride through the Kaiteri Terry Mountain Bike Park, which offers a variety of trails for all skill levels. The park is surrounded with lush native bush, and if you're a mountain biker, you'll love it. Abel Tasman charters luxury cruise from from Stevens Bay. This cruise provides a boutique natural experience. It departs from Stevens Bay, which is next to Kaiteri Terry. You can experience the beauty of the Abel Tasman National Park in comfort with opportunities for swimming, snorkeling, kayaking, and exploring the secluded beaches in the park. Abel Tasman Sailing. If sailing boats are your thing, then consider going on an adventure with Abel Tasman sailing with their catamaran, which starts from Kaiteri Terry Beach. Enjoy the serene waters, stunning coastal scenery, and a chance to spot the maritime wildlife while you are sailing through the waters of the National Park. Waka Abel Tasman Tours. This is a special cultural journey. From Kaiteri Terry Beach, you will be taken on a guided waka tour. A waka is a traditional Mary canoe. Along the way, you'll learn about the Mary traditions, hear about the history, and paddle through the pristine waters of the park. So while you're in the Kaiteri Terry region, there's a little walk I love, one between Kaiteri Terry and Little Kaiteri Terry. Enjoy this leisurely walk between those beaches, two of the most beautiful ones in the region. This short scenic walk offers stunning views and a chance to relax on the golden sands. Now let's move to Marahau Beach, which is only about 15 minutes drive from Kaiteri Terry. Similar to with Kaiteri Terry, from Marahau Beach you can also take a water taxi into the remote parts of the Abel Tasman National Park. These water taxis provide access for walkers. You can go from one beach and get picked up on another one, or you can walk all the way back. There are a number of operators providing these water taxi services into the Abel Tasman National Park. Kayaking in the Abel Tasman National Park. Discover the coastal beauty of the Abel Tasman with a kayaking adventure, which starts from Marahau Beach. Paddle along the stunning shoreline, visit hidden lagoons, and encounter local wildlife. Abel Tasman Canyoning. Now, this is something really special. I've enjoyed 
this experience myself and it was incredibly exhilarating. There are really no better thrill than canyoning in the Abel Tasman National Park. This small group tour departs from Maraha Beach. By the end of the day, you will have navigated through waterfalls, natural slides and deep pools. If you fit and love an adrenaline rush, then this is a must-do trip for you. Eco Apple Tasman Tours. Also from Maraha Beach, you can join the Eco Apple Tasman Tour. With this tour, you will explore the national park with a local guide who is very passionate about conservation. You learn about the local ecology, enjoy walk, and have so much fun along the way. So one of the top attractions, obviously, in the Apple Tasman National Park is going on walks. You can either do day walks or multi-day walks. As mentioned before, for the water taxis provide an excellent access into the park, but you can also start walking right from Maraha Beach. There's a large car park at Maraha Beach. You can park your car and you can walk into the Abel Tasman and you can walk out again, or you can use the water taxis again. The park offers a network of well-maintained tracks through lush forests, along golden beaches, and past scenic viewpoints. You can also embark on a multi-day kayaking and walking tour, or on the combination of both. Again, I will put some links into the description box below. Also, you can download my free New Zealand planning sheet in the description box. This will help you greatly with setting up your New Zealand holiday. Plus, put any questions into the comments box below. So here are some key recommendations for the Nelson and Abel Tasman National Park. If your time is short, fly into Nelson Airport from the North Island. Stay at least two nights, even three nights in the region and use it as a base to do some of the highlights and sites we mentioned before. The Nelson Tasman region has a very moderate climate, so you could visit almost throughout the year. However, June, to August, which is our winter season, some of the operator will be closed for their winter break. For the peak summer season from November till April, you need to pre-book your accommodation at least four to six months ahead of arrival. So as a summary on the Abel Tasman and Nelson, so bring as much time as you can and enjoy one of the best kept secrets in New Zealand, the Nelson Tasman region. As mentioned before, there are links in the description box below. If you're heading over to the west coast of the South Island, watch this video with some travel advice and tips to stop along the way. If you find this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button below, thumbs up to stay connected for more helpful New Zealand travel tips. Also, put any comments or questions into the box below. See you in the next video.